Hi, everybody. Welcome to uh, Exploring Our New Release. We're launching into August with Spaces EDU. My name is Tatiana. I'm the Education, Training, and Engagement Specialist here. So excited to show you what's been released this month. Uh, we'll take a peek at all these updates um, in action within the account as well. And I'm going to share some things that are coming up in October, which is our next release. It's our Halloween edition. All right, starting off with our Clever integration. So we are enhancing our platform by incorporating support for a single sign-on with Clever. Uh, it's a leading single sign-on platform for K-12 schools, if you're not familiar. And this integration means that users can seamlessly log into our system using their Clever credentials, really streamlining the process of accessing our resources. And the most, uh, I guess the biggest update here uh, this month is our update to our user interface and also navigation. We're calling this one back to basics um, here at Spaces EDU. We've made a number of changes to help simplify the interface of your account. Um, and our goal is to make features in the classroom more obvious and easy to use. So what you'll notice here is that when you enter your class, your main destination is the Spaces tab. You will also find your aggregated feed tab available in the section as well right next to the Spaces tab. And at the very top on your navigation bar menu, you will also notice that all of your assessment tools have been grouped together under a centralized assessment tab. And within the Spaces tab, you'll see that we've switched things around a little bit of how they're displayed. At the very top, you'll see your class space next to the reporting space. If the reporting is enabled at your district, then you will see both of these options here available. And below the class space, you'll see your one-to-one -one spaces, originally called individual spaces, and below one-to-one -one spaces are your group spaces. And in terms of other minor changes here to the interface or within the back to basics update you will see here that curriculum goals have now been renamed to pin tags just to make it a bit more obvious to folks here as to what the purpose is of curriculum goals uh, curriculum goals are essentially uh, curriculum tags that you pin to the top of your list here as the name suggests pin tags um, that's where they live on your list and we also have streamlined the posting process by removing the post type options fields, if you recall uh, from your post selections. Um, so now when you select a space, you simultaneously select the post type associated with it. So there is no separate option here available anymore. For posting to one-to-one -one or group spaces, the template type post will be automatically used where a unique copy of the new post is created for each student or group selected. When you're posting to the class space, on the other hand, the shared post will be used. So a single copy of the post uh, will target every selected student uh, from the list that you chose. So that being said, use the class space to create a single post for every, sing for every selected student. On the other hand, if you'd like to create a separate post for each student or group selected, you'll have to opt for a one-to-one -one or a group space. Um, it's important to note here that your one-to-one -one spaces and your group spaces must contain students for you to be able to publish a post. Otherwise, you will have to save it as a draft and then officially post once students are added to those, de 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 sorry, to those dedicated spaces. And the new feature that we've all been waiting for is our proficiency-based gradebook, the Growth Book. It's a comp comprehensive and intuitive tool designed for efficient academic performance tracking in schools. This feature allows teachers to record, monitor, and analyze students' proficiencies across different activities and subjects. You can easily input assessments from, like I said, activities, quizzes, tests, and projects, and this feature facilitates real-time tracking of your students progress really enabling you to properly identify struggling students and areas of improvement um, it's reliable it's secure for managing academic performance data and um, really empowering you and your mission to deliver high quality education um, the growth book is great for rapid assessments you don't need to attach any evidence of learning to it which is great and we'll be exploring this together in just a moment 
you know, as we dive into the teacher account here. Speaking of, let's jump right in. Um, so as you can see, as I enter my class, I'm directly taken to the spaces tab. Um, I'll see here that I have my class space at the top next to my reporting space. If I want to edit settings, the same uh, you know, process applies. I click on those three dots and I can click on edit space settings. The same thing here for additional learning environments. So nothing has changed here in terms of um, modifications to those spaces. And if you want to add additional spaces here or learning environments, you can click the plus create button on the bottom right. You can still access your feed. So by clicking the feed tab here, you'll see all of the posts that have been published across your spaces by you and by your students as well. So you can scroll through that content. You can also filter by specific students to so have a more targeted view. You can also filter by specific curriculum tag as well up top here. And this is where you can also access your pin tags and you can change those around anytime during the year. Currently, I have all the three core competencies tagged, so communication, thinking, personal, and social. But if I wanted to switch that around anytime during the school year, I could do so and update that information here, making sure that the learning objectives are clear from term to term for myself and for my students too. Okay, so let's jump into the assessment tab here. This is a brand new addition to your class. Uh, you would not have had access to this previously. I'm um, really grateful for this assessment tab because now it includes all of your assessment tool tools, so, plural. Um, so within the assessment tab, you have access to your brand new growth book, if that's been enabled by your district. You also have your proficiency report here, your visibility settings for proficiencies, and your tag sets where you could add um, your curriculum tags. Previously, all of these tools were living elsewhere within your class, so there's no more guesswork here um, or you no need, to, no need to remember where everything lives. It is all in the assessment tab now. So let's jump into the growth book real quickly. I have, have added addition. I have added uh, growth book entries here already, but um, I do wanted to walk you through how to do that. Um, so let's do that together. Uh, when you log into your Spaces EDU account for the first time, especially after the release, you you will likely not have any growth book entries, right? So to add a new entry, you can click on the plus entry button right here and then add a title. So we will call this one novel study presentation two since the first one was already recorded and we also need to um, include curriculum tags so what are we assessing here let's add our ELA tags so we just include these two and then click on create there we have it so we added this to our growth book so to start assessing, let's say you have your students doing their presentations uh, right in front of you as we speak. You would have your Spaces EDU account opened here to the growth book on your computer. This is only available on the web, app, uh, the web uh, version of Spaces EDU. And then you would click on the box here to start applying your proficiencies. So Keaton has gone and you've assessed Keaton. You decided these are the proficiency levels that you're going to apply for Keaton. Then you're going to move on to Maylin and Mirabelle, so on and so forth. So you can always adjust these proficiencies as well. So if you wanted to, you could do so by re-clicking on the box and assigning a different profic proficiency from here. Um, and Similarly to the proficiency report, you can export all of this data as a CSV file by clicking the download button in the top right corner. Um, alternatively, if you just wanted to view um, this growth book a bit more, have it a bit more targeted, if you will, then you can filter by specific student, you can filter by specific tag, subject, or even entry if you wanted to um, have it less cluttered here visually. 
And what I also wanted to point out here is a different colors you'll see in the columns. So any growth book entry will be represented in blue and the green entries here are in representing your activities that you've decided to add to the growth book. So any existing activity can be uh, retroactively added to the growth book and any new ones that you, you create can also be added as well. Um, so to add your activity, let's go back here and we'll enter the activity tab and we can select an activity from the list here, edit it, and then scroll all the way down to toggle this on and add it to the growth book, making sure we save our changes. So now when we go back into our, our assessment tab within the growth book, we can see that this has been newly added. What's awesome is that you can also assess directly from the growth book. So if you wanted to assign those proficiencies from here, you could do that as well. Um, and you can see who hasn't been assigned this like these specific activities. Um, they would be indicated with an NA, so non-applicable. Um, and chances are that you, you didn't include these students for a reason to the activity or they were added to your class after the activity was um, assigned. So if you needed to have a bit more context, so if you just wanted to take a peek at the activity altogether, you can click on this icon here next to the name to bring you to the quick review tab and you can take a look at the actual submissions, look at the artifacts that they've attached, or you can go back into the instructions to view um, you know, for more context here. So great little tip for you. Um, so any growth book entries and activities that you decide to sync here to the growth book are currently not being populated um, or represented in the proficiency report, but that is going to change in October. That's coming in the October release. But speaking of the proficiency report, let's go there just for a second to show you or just to explain um, what the difference is here. So the proficiency report is a display of assessment data, whereas the growth book is a, it allows you to add assessment data on the fly without any evidence of learning. Um, so that is the main difference. And as I mentioned in the future, those entries will then be communicated to the proficiency report. So making it definitely more robust um, a one-stop shop for you to see a visual representation of your students' growth, of your class uh, competency coverage, standards coverage as well, which will be very exciting. And the proficiency report displays proficiencies um, and posts whether that's most recent or average as well, so allowing you to compare. Um, so great for competency coverage too. And you can similarly to the growth book filter by specific student, which is great for conferencing with your students one on one or with their families present as well. You can filter by tag, specific subject, or if you have a split grade, you can also filter by grades here. And if you want to, you can also export this as a CSV file. All right, so that was it uh, in terms of the updates within your account. Uh, but of course, if you wanted to get a bit more information, you can always go to our resources website here by going to spaces.edu.com resources, all resources. And you will see we have our video tutorials available as well. So we made sure they've been updated with the back to basics updates in mind. So you can always refer back to this whenever you'd like. Okay. All right. Before we go, let's speak a bit about the October release, giving you a sneak peek into what's coming. We already touched on the, the uh, proficiency report here and how it will include the growth book entries and activity submissions because currently it is limited to just proficiencies that have been applied to posts. But with this update, you will now be able to see any growth book entries and activity submissions before they become posts to the proficiency report and really increasing visibility of all proficiencies assessed within a spaces edu classroom so again making it a reliable one-stop shop for you here when it comes to competency coverage assessment etc um, and additional 
growth book updates are coming too in October. So first we have here um, the ability to apply an overall proficiency within the growth book. Of course, you use your professional judgment here if it's applicable um, and if it's appropriate for that specific entry, but you will be able to apply any you know, um, overall proficiency for your students uh, within the growth book, and that includes activities as well. And you can, um, you know, uh, have bulk edits of proficiencies within the growth book too. We understand that applying multiple proficiencies within a table can be a lot of work, especially when you're assessing multiple curriculum tags across many students. Um, so within the growth book, a new dedicated proficiency mode will allow you to apply multiple proficiencies in just a few clicks. This will allow you to save time and focus on what you do best and what really matters, which is teaching. And then we are also going to have a brand new proficiency level here called insufficient evidence. So if a post, an activity submission or growth book entry cannot be assessed, you will now have the option to indicate insufficient evidence or IE. Once the post activity or growth book entry is ready to be assessed, you can apply this proficiency score. One thing to note is that the IE option will allow you to exclude posts with insufficient evidence from proficiency calculations. So we're not going to be affecting any averages here or most recent proficiency levels in the proficiency report. Um, and last but not least, with scheduled or manual imports, districts will now be able to make attendance data available for teachers and students to review within the reporting space. This has been a request in the past. Time and time again, teachers and district uh, administrators and leads wanted to have that information available within the reporting space. Um, so this is coming up in October. Uh, other than that, thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions about the, these new updates, uh, please contact our support team at hello at spaces.edu.com and keep in touch with us through our socials uh, listed there and listen to our brand new Growth Over Grades Season 3 episodes. Uh, you can follow us on all streaming platforms. It is now being hosted by our very own Jordan Lewis. You're probably familiar as a name you're probably familiar with already, uh, but definitely worth a listen to keep up to date on um you know, leaders and experts in the competency education space, uh, whether you're focusing on, you know, portrait for graduate or core competencies, whatever the case may be, that information might be relevant and, and, and um, valuable for you. Um, so definitely give that a listen. And in the meantime, until the next release, I would encourage you to take a look at our product roadmap. So if you go to the spaceseu.com website and scroll down to the footer here, you'll see a product roadmap link. By clicking on that, you'll have access to what's coming up. So the information that I already communicated for you, what uh, might be uh, requiring your input as an educator. So these are sort of ideas that our product team are considering so you can give your input on there highly recommend uh, doing so especially when it comes to the annotation tools those are updates that we are exploring um, that have come up again in conversations with educators so we would love to hear more input from you about what types of annotations are important to you what you essentially like to see in the platform if you don't see anything here that is on your wish list that's okay. Go to the top right corner, click on that submit idea button and explain it in detail. Tell us what you want to see and how critical it is to you. Provide your email address and our product team will take that in consideration. Um, and if there's follow-up needed, we need additional information, they will reach out as well. Um, I want to stress that we take recommendations and feedback from our educators very seriously because we want to make sure that the platform reflects the reality that you are facing in the classroom um, and how you know reliable we can make our ed tech tool for you. So definitely communicate those ideas with us whenever possible. All right, so other than that, thank you so much again for joining me and I hope to see you very soon at another webinar and happy exploring.